New research shows us that the average Brit will have their heart broken twice in their lifetime. Now that's twice for men and three times for the nation's ladies. But what is a broken heart? And is there such a thing in actual fact? And what effect does it actually have on our heart's health? Well, joining me here today to discuss these questions, as well as offering some top tips on how to keep your heart healthy, is cardiologist from Benenden Health, Dr. Bob Gerber, a relationship Hello. and expert psychologist, Corinne Sweet. Guys, thanks for coming in. Hi. Pleasure. Nice Hi. to see you. Uh, we've only got a little short amount of time this, and this is a huge topic. Um, but Corinne, start with you. We, we get our heart broken, I think, on average twice in our lifetime. But what is a broken heart? How do we know we've got a broken heart and we're not just feeling a bit down after you know, a casual relationship ending. Broken heart is when you have loved somebody, it doesn't matter how long it's been for, and you feel intensely sad, mm. grief-stricken, abandoned, um, upset, you can't sleep, you can't eat, and you feel like life's over, and you sink into a whole, whole sort of lake of despair. Yeah, and Bob, from like a health and well-being point of view, what does that lead to and what effects does all of those symptoms that have? I mean, we do know, as we were talking earlier, Kevin, there is a condition called broken heart syndrome, actually. Yeah. It's a very rare condition. It's less than 2% of uh, patients that have heart attack where they, uh, it's called Takotsubo cardiomyopathy because it was first described in Japan, and it's an intense uh, uh, bereavement reaction mm. where, in fact, the you do get a cardiomyopathy, but the, the positive thing is that 90 to 95 percent of the people that do have this type of cardiomyopathy do recover uh, with no ill effects. Yeah. Um, but in terms of heart disease in general, it's something that we really, you know, particularly in the UK, need to be careful of. We need to look at our diet, look what we're doing in terms of smoking, drinking, and it's possibly one of the negative uh, aspects of having a broken heart where you, you go down the downward spiral. Yeah start smoking, drinking too much, eating badly and not exercising, mm. that actually causes the heart disease in the long run. Yeah, because I think you said when we were talking earlier, Corinne, like people often drown their sorrows in situations like this, but that's obviously not something we should actually really be doing. Is yes, it? I think once somebody goes out the door, you start opening the fridge and going for the wine, you can mm. start going for the beer, you're eating sugary things, you're mm. just kind of either comfort eating or the opposite is you drink and you don't eat yeah. and once you've had a few drinks you start smoking and it's it's what a lot of us do and it's totally human that we do it but it's really a bad thing to do the odd glass of wine is fine but yeah. don't just drown your sorrows no. So just in terms of like keeping our heart healthy, Bob, what are some of the sort of benchmark top tips, whether we're suffering from a broken heart or not, but just generally? I mean, in general, exercise is the simplest yeah. thing to do. You know, there's nice studies from Scandinavia showing that half an hour of uh, aerobic exercise three times a week is good for your blood pressure, it can lower your cholesterol. Um, on top of that, Mediterranean type diet, you know, avoid all the saturated fats, yeah. so chips, fast food, and just eat healthily. Try yeah. and eat a sort of, uh, uh, fresh fish once a week uh, and, in, and and try and reduce your cholesterol uh, yeah. uh, by doing that as well. And you mentioned like aerobic activity, people watch this might think oh, I've got to join a gym and start leaping around in lycra. That's not it at all, aerobic is anything that raises your heart rate yeah. and keeps it up there yeah. for a sustained period yeah, of time. It could be anything, it could be a brisk walk, it could be swimming, it could be, uh, but you really do need to build it into your timetable, go and do yeah. some activity at least half an hour if not more swimming is a, is a, is a good activity yeah. and cycling. Yeah. And um, if, if you're somebody who doesn't like that kind of exercise, literally, if you do some housework and you mm -hmm. go up and down stairs, mm -hmm. you've got a garden, I know it's rainy, but if you go outside, you get the light and you get, you can go and hack a few rose mm -hmm. heads down and get, get do some chopping breath, and keep it going. do some physical exercise. Yeah. And I always say, get, start pummeling a cushion or get your rage <laughs> out get hold of a cushion and give it a good shake yeah. if you're feeling angry because that'll start you moving. Yeah. And dance, put on some music, dance around the living room, dance around your bedroom. I mean, actually, that's a really good well, thing yeah. to do. Everything you've said there, I think, kind of preempts what I was going to say to you. you know, what tips would you have for somebody for mending a broken heart? And it's probably some of those things and more. Well, yes, I think the place to start is to fall in love with you right. and mm -hmm. is to say that I'm all right and to try and build on what's good about you. Build your self-esteem. That means being mm -hmm. with good friends who care for you, look in the mirror and say, actually, I'm not that yeah. bad. Yeah. Uh, looking after your health will help. And you, you have to kind of lick your wounds and allow yourself to get over yeah, it. Yeah. And be prepared for it to take some time. It will take yeah. time and it will depend how intense and long the relationship. Yeah. The more intense and long, the, more, the longer it will take. And if it's just an affair, you'll probably be over it by tomorrow.
There you go. And at the moment, uh, Bob, what else is going on? Because it's National Heart Month. Yeah, I was about to say, there's a lot going on. So if you are broken hearted, get involved in uh, National Heart Month. There's, uh, if you go to the British Heart Foundation, which every year supports National Heart Month, which yeah. is February, which is uh, a great organisation, charity that looks after all of our patients that have heart disease. Afterwards, they need their rehabilitation, patient information mm -hmm. leaflets, and also vital research that is done by the BHF. Get involved, they're doing red fundraising days. We at Benenden have done a Healthy Heart Day, uh, it was yesterday in fact, and uh, there are things going up and down the country. I'm personally right. running the London Marathon. If anyone wants to support my Just Giving site for the BHF and hopefully raising a lot of money for a good cause. Great stuff, go on the website, search Dr. Robert Gerber. Yeah. Bob to his friends. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you ever so much for coming in, guys. Uh, we didn't have much time, but great topic and uh, good to have your company. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. And thanks to you guys for watching wherever you are. Now, if you've listened to anything, uh, if we've touched on anything there, Bob or Korean said, and you think, I'd like to find out more about that, or how can I keep my heart healthy or my health in general, then you can log on to the Benenden Health website. Plenty of good information for you there. Till next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.